Hello and welcome to another video. So this is about um, looking for work and how to build your confidence or rebuild your confidence in uh, looking in terms of looking for work. Um, now, when it comes to um, looking for work, as said in my last video, the best way to do it is to find the vacancies first and then adapt your CV along with what they're looking for. Um, <clears throat> and it's always good to have about three or four CVs if they ask for it uh, to be, you should have at least four different CVs. And we, well, the one thing I would say is do some research in terms of looking for work. Not necessarily to apply straight away but to find out, you know, where the job is, um, the company it's for, so you can do a bit of research uh, on the company before you decide to go for that position. Because it's very hard to judge a workplace when you haven't seen it. Um, if you're y young and you are still at school and you get a chance to do work experience, then I would say definitely do that because I liked that part of school where I could do work experience uh, I did that at Finland Football Club, not with school, but when I was working as a steward. Uh, at school, I did work experience in a primary school, and I also did work, work experience in a museum that used to be on the South Bank called the, the, the it's called the Museum of the Moving Image, and it was all about um, TV, and, and um, it was kind of like a museum for television, if that makes sense. Uh, because it was right near where the television studios were. Um, and so if you ever get the chance to do work experience, take up on it because it can actually lead to work. Um, the one thing that I really like is that they're bringing back apprenticeships. And if you get a chance to do that, oh, what well, on based on your current situation, um, is something to consider. If there is an industry that you really want to work in, uh, and I won and I did uh, when I first started work. It was first started looking for work when I left school. I did a day's experience uh, working in a gym in London, central London. But because of the hours, I wasn't ready to get up. You had to do from like six a.m. to like eleven a.m. sometimes, and I thought, no, that's too long a day for me. I've got the feel of it, and I actually said, you know, thanks for the work experience, but I don't think I'm ready for this type of work because I didn't like the shift patterns so that's why that's how I then uh, found my first job working for a marketing company in, Cam in Camden Town and that really was because what they what I found when I left school it wasn't so much about what qualifications it ha you had but it was all based on what your experiences were um, and I feel that that's gone back to that because, you know, if you think about like a teaching job, now if there's around about a thousand teachers that want a job in a school, but there's only one job going, they then only one person can get that job. So you need to stand, make yourself stand out. And if they give you a chance to do work experience, then always take them up on it so you can get the feel of it and see if it is really something you want to do. Um, and the, the and the other and so you know when it comes to applying for work, you know look for roles where you can get the feel of the place before you decide that you want to do it full time. I did housekeeping as my last work, working for the Premier Inn, but I was I found it. At the time, I had really bad anxiety and was getting anxious about it. And it was okay, but I, it wasn't for me. I can't make a bed to save my life. And it felt like I kept getting it wrong and I just thought, no, this isn't for me. Uh, but it was worth giving it a try. So that's what I was saying. So, and what they did is exactly the same. They rang me up and said, well, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a trial and then you come along and see if you like it and that is one of the best ways of learning about different industries and work to find the one that you really want to work in um, 
so when you do a CV always look up the the job first and then do the CV afterwards if they ask for it but create four different CVs if there's uh, if there's four industries that you want to work that you uh, want to work in then you need to have one each based on that type of job and as I'm saying research before you apply research the jobs and what they all have in common for example um, some when you work when working in a call centre and doing housekeeping you are more or less in charge of you in charge of yourself but if you needed help there were people there to go to if you if there's something you weren't sure of but you did have to manage your own workload you had to work without supervision and that takes time but the way they did it was that they would do the training and part of the training was sitting with a, a, a more senior agent to learn how it works and then with them sitting next to you then you would take start taking some of those calls before then you went live on your own to take them calls as well and that is the best way of you know getting them finding out for yourself if it's really something that you want to do um, so you know when it comes to um, building your confidence in work find your feet first and then decide if it's for you uh, some companies they will do normally do like a six six month a six week um, trial period so if that's the case then you know uh, I mean the job that I had was right for me at the time because it paid well it was full I could take full-time employment then and they were very flexible and adaptable sometimes it meant working late doing the late shift but from it was the right job at the right time now um, you know I've taken a different path but that's what life's about but if there's if there are multiple industries that you really want to find out and, and and to choose which one you know you feel is for you sometimes you have to do about three or four different trials to find that that job so, but I never feel like oh god but what if they don't take me on you'll soon find it out once you do the trial if they give a few a trial do the trial go over with them or, or what the parts of the job that you liked on some of the, some of the, the part of the job that you, you found difficult and what they normally do is work with you to build on the build on your weaknesses as well as your strengths so um you know if when you're looking for employment and, and finding your confidence it's important that you are confident when, when in the workplace because they are relying on you to often be the front man so when you're in a call center you're the first person that that customer will speak to um, and I've done other videos and uh, leading up to this one if you want to check them out uh, I've got two channels now I've got my normal main channel which is the typical London girl I've changed name on that a few times but I'm sticking with that and I've also just set up a uh, it's called Carrie's Education a YouTube channel which will have all these types of videos on but obviously because it's a new channel I can't upload anymore until they've gone out um, so this will be on my main channel but if you want to check that out as well in the videos I've done so far on that you can but you know you do have to have a level of confidence when it comes to workplace because you often will be the right first person that a customer will speak to uh, or you, you do if it's client based you know, you're the first person they'll get to see when they when you greet them at the door so you do have to make an impression never go into work uh, with without looking smart dress for the job very important um, and ask them what is the the attire for this job that's a one important question if they don't mention it ask the question well what is what uh, am I is there a uniform that I have to or certain clothes that I have to wear and when working in the call centre we had to be it had to be tailored office clothes that we would have to wear and we weren't allowed to wear jeans we weren't allowed to wear we weren't allowed to wear leggings um, you have had to make sure that if you wore a skirt it was either just above the knee or below the knee you couldn't expose your shoulders so they can be quite strict when it comes to uh, dressing for the job but then they would have dress down day on Fridays 
so you could wear your jeans kind of work and the same on working weekends so when it comes to finding your confidence the one question you need to ask which I don't mention is what is the respect what is the required uniform that I have to wear um, and dress for that job don't go in with jeans and t-shirt always go in smart and you know if they do have to stand days then again they sometimes will say you're allowed to wear jeans you can't wear crop trousers they have to either be jeans or that or you can wear leggings on just stand day uh, again you can't expose your shoulders so but you're allowed to wear a t-shirt um, a, a blouse for example uh, vest tops as long as they cover your shoulders um, so you know you have to be so to build your confidence dress for the job and and it does mean, mean that sometimes you will have to also um, learn as you go as well um, and it's just important that you you know attire to that job so whatever they they require in their specification first of all do you research then apply for the job and then but do you see Viva ask for it or fill in the application form that they which the, often, often now you can download um, and just you know be professional um, but still you can still be uh, humorous but not overly you know because you, an interview is basically they're seeing seeing could this be could this person could I imagine working with that person can I imagine them you know doing the job that they've asked to do can I imagine them to go further in the job that's the kind of questions that they will be thinking when they give you an interview and if you get to the stage interview go to the interview there's times when I haven't and I've regretted it but if they give you an interview just go along even if you find that it's not for you then you can say well thanks very much thank you for giving me the opportunity but I've decided that it's not the job for me but thank you for giving me the opportunity and or you know if it is a job that you're keen on but you didn't get selected time then you can ring up and say well I've just seen uh, the the email saying I've not been successful could you please tell me why is there something that I need to work on um, so sometimes you have to chase them up when it comes to you know if you've got the job or not and that's where I did a video about using your initiative and that's the same thing if they don't ring you ring them okay because then that shows that you're keen when I was working at holiday camp it took me two years to find a job at the holiday camp because the first year I didn't get I didn't get a role but that's when they had massive foot and mouth disease going around and then it was the second year because um, again they often just do it to see if you're keen or not and because I applied for your trees on trot that did make a difference so never think that just because you've got one not back doesn't mean that you can never work for that company they need to say to them well if something else comes up would you keep me on your records because I do really would like to work for your company and that shows that you're keen and then they will they will do that but you have to sh you have to be confident um, and the way of doing it is go for the specification and and if, if you've got the gut instinct of you know that's not really for me that's too much to do um, I don't think I'll be able to get all that done that's fine um, it all depends on what you what you where you want to work and who you want to work for what type of industry do you want to work in and that's where you know uh, lots of time you learn on the job so you know always you know never turn it down if you find that it may be for you but you're not sure just go along just go along do the trial get the experience uh, get, I would say with, we're working a holiday camp for example um, you at least had to give it about two fortnights to adjust to it and, and someone said to me that I worked with and, and said that because they knew I was getting quite homesick and he said to me that don't leave yet you give it another fortnight and see how you feel and if you still feel that you shouldn't be here then then think about leaving but give it another fortnight and that was the best advice I could have been given because then I was down there for five years so you know I, I did the time I did the job 
Uh, I never, be, I would, you know, get up on stage in Jackson party in that way. It was one of the best jobs I've ever had uh, in the end, and it's great because I've made so many. I'm still in touch with via the social media, in touch with lots of the people that I used to work with. Um, you know, through working at Hunter Camp because you do become like a family, and it's a totally different type of. It is a culture shock. It's very different to doing the nine to five job because you're living there basically. You're living and breathing the work, and even when you're not working, you still have guests who will come up to you and ask you questions. So you had to make sure that you were professional all the time because as soon as you were rude to a customer, they would ask you know what 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 department you work in and can put a com complaint through, which you'd want to avoid because. Basically, you're there to make sure that they have a good holiday, that they have a good stay, that they enjoy the food, they enjoy the, sh the shows in the evenings. So you have to be very respectful uh, to the guests and and represent that com that holiday camp wherever you go, um, because they did have certain rules and regulations that like you were that if you were employed by the holiday camp, you weren't allowed to drink off site or, or on site after six, uh, uh, before six o'clock after that time you could but they you know, made it a rule that uh, if you even if it's a day off that you're not you can go like to different places and have a drink but if you were still staying local um because you know you did get recognized by guests and staying on the holiday camp you always had to um, make sure that you were kind-hearted, you know, um, not causing trouble, you know, outside the camp because when they found that you do, because a lot of guests would recognise you and if you wasn't nice to them or they saw you do something that was, you know, really bad out of camp, they would go back to the to your manager and they would often go to guest services and complain about you. Now, I've never had to complain, but I know people there who did. Um, and so you you learn you you live and learn on the job, but it was, it was still such a great um, experience for me because I love I used to love going to see the shows. You now when I used to work split shifts, um, I would often in the afternoon go into Skyline, have a cup of tea, and what they used to have circus display on there, and I would sit and watch that circus. Um, and yeah, I was being I was you know. I remember staff there. Um, so you do get some really good perks when you work in a hunting camp. And that was one of them. And it was the job for me. Um, but in the end, because it was something sad that happened, and because I never got to be a co even though, um, you know, I would dart part of the night away in Jack's and often get on stage. Because you know, once I start dancing, that's it. I'm, I'm away you know, in my own world, parting that away, and I still went to work the next day, um, but, you know, it was great experience, and I'm glad that I did that, because also, you know, because then my next job was working in customer service, um, and I think that's what made that job successful, was because I know how to greet a customer, I know how to talk to a guest, because I don't see any customers on a holiday camp, they're guests, because they're, they're staying there, they're having a holiday and that's what you got to remember, you know, how would you feel if you were on holiday there and the staff wasn't friendly or, you know, approachable because you wouldn't want to go back there so, you know, when it comes to work experience if you get the opportunity, take up on it because it is a really good way of finding out what kind of job and what industry you really want to work in so, um, anyway, so this video has gone on for about 19 minutes, so I'm going to stop it there, but if you've got any questions, leave a comment below. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.